All right, guys, a quick video on how you go from this to this. All right, guys, a couple of years ago, I made a video on using the Epson LWPX 800 video or printer for printing raw decals. Since I've made that video, I've had a lot of people reach out to me about questions they've had. Uh, the video I made was how to do it specifically on a Mac, but not everybody's on a Mac and a lot of people are using PCs. And for me, I just thought the settings were the same. And I just kept explaining the same things over. Um, and one time I shared a screen or one of my one of my buddies shared his screen with me. And I said, oh, that looks different. And, um, and through that conversation, we identify what settings needed to be corrected. And so I helped him out. Um, and then someone else reached out to me asking me the same questions and then ever since then I've had more and more people so rather than answering and kind of doing that over and over again I've decided to make a quick video to show you guys how to make these how to make your custom raw decals with the printer and get away from having a lot of wasted tape like we have here um, or things not being able to print right so I'm going to show you how to use Illustrator 2023 um, what your print settings are and what are the, some of the comments and some tips for uh, making sure you get the best raw decals. So let's turn over to our computer. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start from scratch. So we're gonna go to File, New, and then we are going to create a new document. Um, some of these I've already saved for rod building temp templates or for rod decals, but we're gonna go ahead and start from scratch. Uh, the important thing here is to get your height set correctly. Uh, if you're using 12 millimeter tape, which most rod builders use, uh, the correct height for this is 0 0.47 inches. Uh, if you're using 18 millimeter tape, it's 0 0.71. And if you're using 24 millimeter tape, it's 0.94. Um, your width, this is really gonna depend on what your raw decal is gonna be. Um, if you don't know, I just start with three inches and then you can make adjustments accordingly. So we're gonna go ahead and create this file. Now that I've got this template here, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my text and my design to this uh, decal. And for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna create a bunch of Blah, 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 text right there. And so I've got a text box. I'm gonna expand the text to actually just go slightly over the rod building or the rod decal length. And so right here, you can see this bottom, the artboard is set for three mil or three inches. My design up on top goes a, quarter, um, a little bit longer than that. Um, just the tip, I guess, if you're using text, you see this area right here and beneath it, this is actually part of the image. If you want to get rid of this text here or this area, you have to convert this into an object. Now, once you create it into an object, you're gonna lose the ability to make changes to it. So if you're gonna go that route, um, I would go in and make a copy of it. This copy up here will be the text version of this file. And then this here, we're gonna go ahead and create into an object. So we're gonna to go to object, expand both, and now it's an object. And now I don't, I don't have that area in the bottom. It's specifically the the filter size here or the, 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 the width. I'm going to take this document here, increase the height of it, and say, this is what I want my decal to say. All right, let me just, and then you can use your aligning, aligning tools to get this centered on the artboard and so forth. So right now, I started off with three inches by 0 0.47. Height-wise, I look to be all right within the 0 0.47. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, well, actually, I need my artboard to expand a little bit more. So you can click on this artboard clicker and drag it out to the correct length. So there you go. This is the um, text that I'm going to put on my artboard. Um, obviously this applies to uh, logos that you may be bringing in, uh, designs or pictures you may be bringing in. Um, if you're gonna be bringing in pictures, since the printer does uh, only print out kind of in single color tape, um, I would recommend bringing in everything in the, into black uh, and so just use black as the only color. If you have variations of it, it just, it, it may not look very well. So uh, everything that you bring in, use black. Uh, and if you're importing images from the internet, go ahead and search for objects as their silhouettes, which, and then bring them in as a black and white picture into um, Illustrator. And uh, it, it is, it's your best chance to get a best picture. So once you have this set up here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make adjustments to our printer settings and go um, go ahead and printing. So the first, we're going to go to file, print, and then you'll see several things here uh, right off the bat. So obviously, so do you see the my print preview window here is pretty big, uh, and and you see these dotted lines around there, uh, and then you see um, kind of way in there this little 
my actual decal. Um, the first thing you notice is I'm, I'm, I have the wrong printer selected. So let's go ahead and um, change this to um, our printer that we're going to be using, which is our Epson, where is it at? There it is, 400, 800, sorry. Um, and that got better. You'll see that now you have um, two lines around there and we'll talk about what that means. Um, so the first thing you do is you change your printer. Um, these settings, as you're going through them, you're gonna wanna make sure that um, ignore artboards is not selected. Uh, your media size is defined by driver. The orientation is set for auto rotate. As you've seen here, this is horizontal and here it's vertical. Uh, visible and printable layers. Um, if you're only using one layer, um, this doesn't really matter. Um, placement, if, you're, if your um, raw decal is designed and it's centered to your artboard also doesn't matter. Uh, scaling, you do wanna select do not scale. All right, so now we're looking at this, we're focusing in here on this uh, print preview. You'll see there's two definitions here, or two sizes, one for document, one for media. Document is the, your artboard, what we actually defined as part. So here when I, it started off with three and then I expanded the width to 3.3 and the height is 0.47. Now the printer wants to print a file that is 0.71 by 3.94. So um, technically this will work, um, but you're gonna end up in this case, it, it assumes I'm printing with, a, with a, uh, an 18 millimeter tape. And so we've got to change that. And it's also gonna print a 3.94 versus 3.3. .3. So we've got to make a change in here. To make that change, you go to file or here in the setup button. Let's go ahead and click that button. And then similar to what we had to do earlier, we had to choose the Epson uh, PX800 and then we are going to go to more settings in here all right so we're going to go in here we're going to change our width to 12 millimeters we're going to change our length to 3.3 uh, you don't want to click this tape length automatically so when you click this it's going to change it to 16.54 inches so a lot of times people message me and tell me that their printer printed out a long piece of tape when they only had a small section of it uh, it's because this is selected, so you don't want that selected. Um, choose the right width of your tape, and then choose the right length of the artboard that you used. So in this case, I changed 3.3. .3. I go to File Print, and so this for I'm not sure exactly why this happens, but you see here, we, even though we made those changes in the setup, nothing changes. So when that happens, I'm basically going to have to repeat the steps. Um, in this case, I'll hit Done. I'm going to go to file print and now it's corrected. So is there something around that setup where it resets the settings or it takes a little bit for you have to hit that done button for the settings to apply. Um, but just when you when that happens, hit file done or sorry, hit done here and it'll come back. All right. Now that you have these settings saved, if you want to go ahead and prevent um, minimize some rework as specifically as it comes to using this file. Um, I tell people to go ahead and change this preset name here. Uh, give it another name, give it its own name. And so in this case, I'm gonna say 12 millimeter custom raw decal. And next time I come to this uh, file, um, I can just choose this setting and it'll, it'll remember everything uh, for it and it'll choose it. So before I hit print, I'm going to take a quick look here and look at these dashed lines. So these are the, the, the margins for the paint for the printer. And so you want to make sure nothing's touching or nothing's to the outside of these lines here. So um, in this case, maybe there's a little bit up here on the upper side where I'm coming close to it. So I may come back and hit cancel and make some adjustments to this down a little bit and come back to file print. And now everything seems to be inside the margins and I can go ahead and hit print. All right, now the last thing, now that I've got my printed files here, uh, one thing I do wanna say is um, there's a few tips that I, I do. You definitely wanna save your files um, and the saving the files will remember the artboard size here accordingly. So what I like to do is I like to save all my raw decals um, this is a new document. I'll go ahead and save. 
I'm just to save them onto my computer for now for our decals. And so you, what you'll see here is I like to use the size of the tape that the file is set for. So in this case, 12 mm, and then I can put custom uh, text for names. And so you'll see I have this file already set up here. And so what this actually does, it allows me to, whenever I have a customer that wants a raw decal that has their name on it, I just open this file and I'll change the name. Um, and uh, it's already set up for printing, so it becomes really easy to do that. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this useful. Hopefully, this solves a lot of your problems. And again, if, if there's something I missed here that wasn't part of this, just feel free to add a comment below or reach out to me on our email. So thanks again. See you guys.